Hey everyone, hope you're having a good Easter if you celebrate it. Today I'm back with another episode of my renovation series and in this video I'll be showing you the process of replacing the remainder of my 100 year old roof with a brand new one. I've said in the past that I don't want to reveal too much about what my house looks like from the front because I don't want to be tracked down and tickled by any perverts but at the same time I do have to reveal a bit more of the front just to show you today's process so because of that if there are any security camera or baseball bat companies out there that would like to sponsor me then I'd love to hear from you so that I can protect myself from the aforementioned perverts with PhDs in Google Street View. For those of you who have been following along through this entire renovation process, you'll probably remember that I got the roof on the rear part of this building done back in August when I was getting the internal ceiling raised and the new roof windows put in. When he was doing this back part of the building, Jacob the roofer noticed that one of the tiles had kind of slipped off this front section of roof. So he went over and had a look at it and found that the timber, the wood which holds the tiles in place on this part of the roof, had all become kind of rotten and because of that he just couldn't do a quick little fix. Over time a couple more tiles slipped from this section of the roof and it became obvious that it was likely going to be a full re-roofing job. Because this roof is directly over the pavement where people are walking every day it became a matter of rather urgent safety to get the roof sorted. Like if one of those pan tiles fully slipped off and conked someone on the head they'd be a goner and I'd either get sued or get to jail and I don't think I would thrive in the jail environment. To highlight just how bad the roof was on this back section of the front roof you can see just how bad the wood had gotten over to the left. It was all rotten and if things had been left any longer this would have started affecting the trusses which are those roof beams you can see and the roof would eventually cave in on me and my cat which wouldn't have been ideal. Quickly before I forget because I don't think I fully mentioned it yet the team doing the work were Jacob, Lewis, Mike and TJ. In total they did the full job in six days and I know I'm speaking to a very small portion of my audience but if you're in central Scotland and need a roofer I'd highly recommend all of them. They're all really sound, do a great job and are very fast so I'll drop a link to Jacob's page in the description box for anyone interested. Coming back to the actual process that was getting done to the roof, I mentioned in the previous re-roofing video that in the village where I live, a lot of the houses, including my one, are incredibly old and go as far back as the 1700s. And a lot of these buildings use these old style pan tile roof tiles that you've seen so far, which are about 100 years old. These tiles do have quite a nice rustic character to them, however I believe they're no longer manufactured in this exact style. And when I say this exact style of tile, you can get brand new ones which look exactly the same, which is what we've gone for. However, these new style ones are nailed in. This is different from the old style ones because the old ones were just hung onto the roof and sometimes secured with a bit of cement in some parts. So compared to that new style which is nailed in, the old style is just not the most secure. Despite the availability of these new tiles which are widely manufactured and also just more secure when installed, some folk do opt to just take off all of the old tiles, fix all of the timber, add new felt and then put the old tiles back on but we didn't want to do this for a couple of reasons. As I said before, the tiles aren't manufactured in this old format anymore, so if you have any broken tiles or if you break any tiles during that tile removal process, to replace those you'd need to rely on salvaging them from other old buildings or from other people's random stockpiles, which isn't exactly a reliable or terribly logical approach.
beyond replacing the fusty wood and broken tiles, another improvement Jacob made to the roof was creating better ventilation by adding some vented tiles. Adding these tiles optimizes airflow, and airflow in your roof space is important because it stops the buildup of mildew and mold, which can end up rotting the wood. I'm assuming this is why the roof ended up becoming so rotten in parts before, because there were no vented tiles on it before. And to tag on to this, one question that people had last time round when I showed Jacob putting these vents on the rear part of the roof was, where does the water go when it rains and there's these open vents? I asked Jacob this and he said that there's a built-in tray below the grill which takes in the water and then diverts it out of the bottom. With all of the regular tiles on, the next part of this job was putting ridge tiles along the top and this is another area where the modern products and solutions are just much better than the old way of doing it. The old method involved using cement when it came to securing these top ridges and this isn't a very good way of doing things because over time and with changes in the weather and temperature, the cement would expand and contract causing it to crack and crumble. Instead of that method, Jacob uses a dry ridge system which uses screws and clamps with a waterproof material fixed below the screws which diverts water away from the joints. This dry ridge system is so much better than the old fashioned way of using sand and cement because it's quicker, is much more secure and in my opinion it just looks pretty clean as well. Now as always I'd like to include a little before and after, so here are some shots of that. I'm very happy that this old building once again has a new layer of protection keeping it safe from the elements. With the roof done and the boiler now sorted as I showed you in my previous video, it means I can now move on to the next stages of the renovation which are the bedrooms, hallway and bathroom. So if you'd like to see those updates be sure to subscribe and if you enjoyed this video I'd appreciate you leaving a like. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.